What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up? What's up? And LeVon Maynard. Welcome to the show. What is going on? So this uh, is the Tuesday episode. So uh, Monday and Tuesday are our topics. Uh, yesterday, we talked about um, a pin, or is it like flash? Uh, message that came from the uh, the FBI about uh, bringing burner phones to the Olympics. Um, Wednesday, we'll have a really good discussion. Thursday, I actually have a uh, Ask Us SP where I talk to Alex Warsham. So tune in for that one. Uh, Friday, we talk about everything else. So if you tune into the Friday episodes, we talk about games, movies, other things that are not cybersecurity related. So action packed week, please tune in. Uh, and without further ado, I'll give it to Shannon. All right, everybody. So this article is actually from the Wall Street Journal. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was written by Dustin Balls, and it's titled Biden Administration Forms Cybersecurity Review Board to Probe Failures. Um, and the headline for this, really, um, what it is, is this is a new panel that, that's uh, loosely modeled on the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB. Um, and it's going to look into recently discovered Log4j internet bug and different things like that going forward to try to, try to um, head these things off at the pass, right? So... As I was reading this article, something that something that really struck me here is that this was something I thought was already being done, but apparently it wasn't, right? So as the cybersecurity, as the cybersecurity stuff started to blossom and, and, and bloom under this current administration, I, I, I guess I just automatically assumed this was something that they were doing and they were looking out for, right? I figure if you're going to offer your services, you already have something like this in the background that has gone, this board has gone, um, and it's an inter, it's an independent agency that's going to fall. It's it's um. It's going to fall under the, the homeland, is it? I think yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Homeland DHS. Security, right? Yeah, yeah, Department, yeah. Department of yeah. Homeland Security. Um, but um, I don't know how you don't already have this if you're out there offering support to um, whether it be your agencies or the general public, right? Because we've already seen where we have, uh, where we have, is it DISA? Who is it that was out there? Or was it oh, SZA? SZA? SZA, SZA, yeah. SZA, mm -hmm. that was out there offering assistance, you know what I mean, to anybody that that pretty much wants it, you know what I mean, you just, it's just a matter of, hey, we are making ourselves available to help you out when it comes to hardening and things of that nature. I figured this would have already been in place, but apparently it wasn't. So um, that that kind of, I don't know, it made me think a little bit like, well, how, are we really half-assing some of these initiatives that, that are that are going out there. Um, but something that was good about it that I thought was the size of the board, right? So like the NTSB only has five members. This actually has 15, right? Um, which is good, right? Um, I, I like, I mean, the more people you have from different and hopefully from different walks of life, right? Like hopefully you're not getting 15 of the same types of people, right? From the same industries or whatever. But um, this, is, this is something that is, uh, it's going to help. I like it, but I thought it should have been something that was in place before you start to offer up your expertise on things, right? Like, it just doesn't seem like you thought this out when you went out to the public and said, hey, we're going to help you out with all these things. We, Yes, you're taking cybersecurity serious. We appreciate it, right? But um, you should have all your ducks in a row. And this seemed like something that should have should have gone into that already, right? But um, I don't know. That's just my thinking on it. Ryan, what do you, what do you have on this, man? Uh, so I... I I kind of disagree. Like, I think a, a lot of this is being, uh, unfortunately, the plane's being built in flight just because of the catching up. You know what I mean? Like between administrations, they all had different uh, angles and points of view on how this should work since, uh, I want to say the Obama administration was one of the, the first like forces to really push hard, right? And that was how many years ago? Um, so the government moves a little bit slower. Um, but I, I think it was a matter of like, okay, now we have like CISA and we have, uh, you know, industry partners and things of that nature. Um, who are heading up these initiatives on the government's uh, behalf or in, in association with the government. But now we actually need a department or a board um, to, uh, to help. And this, like you said, it's slightly different, right? So it's more members, uh, but they lack like subpoena power and things like that. Um, so it's kind of still a work in progress. But uh, I was looking at some of the names. So it says like Robert, Rob, Rob Silvers, the undersecretary for the policy at DHS and a lawyer with expertise in cybersecurity issues who chair the review board. Heather Atkins, senior director of security engineering at Alphabet Inc's Google has been tapped as the vice chair. So they're definitely uh, picking people who are very knowledgeable it seems to be in key positions. So 
um, I, I'm I'm pretty um, excited to see who the 15 will be. I, I think it'll be a pretty diverse group of, uh, you know, some government, some uh, industry uh, leaders and what have you. Um, so I, I think I think it's a, obviously, like you said, like we like that the government's taking it seriously. We like that they're building up. Uh, it, it may be uh, a chicken for the egg type situation, um, but as long as it's there, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I didn't know it wasn't there. So that, that didn't seem to be the problem. Um, but now that I know it's there, like, okay, they, they're, being more, they're, they're becoming more robust. They're, you know, getting their, uh, their ducks in a row. Like I have all these old adages <laughs> and saints <laughs> in one conversation, but it looks like they're getting their stuff straight. So I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, and, and I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to oh, clarify. So I'm, I'm sorry, LeVar, real quick. I want to clarify. I'm not against the board, right? I just thought it was something that was already in place, right? For right, every, right, right. For everything that you would already offer. Out there, yeah. Everybody. Yeah. No, I, and I agree. I agree. But um, luckily nothing happened where it, it was called out like, oh, because we don't have a board and that's why this happened. <laughs> so that's, I think that's kind of good. Like, uh, yes, it was not in place yet, but it doesn't seem to have caused any issues. So hopefully it just makes everything more robust. Um, what about you, Gavon? Yeah, I was taking a look at this article, and I, I think it's, you know, obviously, I think it's a good thing overall uh, just to have this board put together uh, to kind of focus on this uh, cybersecurity initi initiative. Uh, and, I, you know, and I'm sure you guys saw it, too, but it, it, they go into the article and saying how they're, um, uh, who is it, uh, Mr. Mayorkas, he says, uh, we are going to be looking at ourselves, we are going to be looking at one another, and it really underscores the purpose of this board to not focus on fault. So they're not, they, they say that they're not really looking for individuals to blame or like, I guess, corporations or uh, lack of cyber uh, awareness to blame, you know, try to try to blame people that aren't taking it uh, serious, but they're trying to maybe uh, investigate what the cause that lead it up, that led up to certain uh, breaches and things of that nature. But at the same time, I, I'm kind of like suspicious of that. I, I feel like it's maybe this board is more so to be, uh, you know, so obviously, it's obviously to find those those holes and see see where we're lacking, generally speaking. But I also think that they kind of want to be able to be uh, be able to, to find you know certain individuals that may be like kind of tied to the uh, uh, you know to the breach and what access they have and how they were managing that that system. But it's it's it, you, know, you guys mentioned like the subpoena power and stuff like that, similar to like I know even they have the. Uh, you know, uh, not to bring too political, but they had the January 6th uh, uh, committee that could subpoena like phone records and things of that nature and find out like, hey, how did this start? You know, where did this all originate from? And like, uh, what is the, the initial cause of the cyber incident uh, in relation to this this uh, this committee here? But I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of a little suspicious of that, but uh, and just like, kind of like you said, Shannon, I mean, it seemed like this is something that should have been uh, already in place long, long ago. Um, I guess maybe they have been relying on the scissors and things like that to uh, maybe to to provide like the security, I don't know, security like uh, uh, reaction and, and, and investigations and things of that nature. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's good to see that. I know I know Biden in general has been seemed to be a bigger focus on the cybersecurity, um, um, widely speaking, compared to maybe some of the past administrations. Which is a you know I think is a great thing, and hopefully this is kind of like a new trend that we're seeing in the uh, in the industry, just that we get become more cyber aware. Um, and obviously, you know, it, it goes all the way back to all the stuff we've we've been covering for the last year year or two here with the the um, um, the ransomware attacks hitting our, our um, oil pipelines and and some of our like uh, security grids and stuff like that, or like uh, the water systems stuff like that, um, and then hitting the meatpacking factory in like Brazil and all this kind of stuff. So. Uh, these kind of things are like very, very important to us, and we also need to be taking it serious. We, have, we should have all the manpower, all the focus that we need to to, to combat these. I mean, these are going to these are things, these are the type of things that can like shut down a country, can cause people to lose their lives, and uh, these kind of committees are like kind of essential to uh, to have. So that's my thoughts on it. But I'll turn it back over to you, Ryan, if you had some more additional thoughts to, to add or or Shannon. So, so maybe oh, so maybe. Maybe you hit the nail on the head with that oil thing, right? Like it's like Chappelle said, we're trying to get that oil. <laughs> you know? like this, I, I, I mean, you think about everything that's happened, right? Like you you brought up the major ones, right? Like the Colonial Pipeline, the JBS, you know what I mean? It's stuff yeah, you're yeah, not going to yeah. mess with. Don't mess with our gas, don't mess with our, our food, especially mm -hmm. our pork in America, right? That's right. Like this, this American, <laughs> right. Americans not getting their bacon? Come on now. Right. Go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> oh no! I was gonna say so as you dig through the uh, the list. I mean, there's some, there's some heavy hitters on here. Uh, like you have um, uh, NSA uh, 
what is he? Uh, cybersecurity official at the NSA, uh, John Carlin. Uh, you have, I see Palo Alto's in here, Microsoft's in here. Um, they have uh, uh, Mark Warren from the the, the uh, Senate uh, Intelligence Committee. So he's the Democrat Senator from Virginia. So it's a lot of diverse people who seem to be coming from the right places, which hopefully will allow transparency where a company can be like, hey, listen, <laughs> this is what the issue is. This is how we found it and how we can resolve it. So maybe there'll be some crosstalk uh, between them. Yeah. So that would, that would be kind of cool. But yeah, I, I honestly don't know how that works because they, you know, I mean, like businesses, governments, things like that have certain things they need to keep close hold. So like, does this mm -hmm. allow them some immunity when they come to the table to, uh, to, you know, fix things. So that's, that's a great point. Yeah. I think cool. with that as well. Yeah. Just having that, uh, potential, uh, camaraderie or just to be able to share, uh, maybe more internal resolution steps or things that they identified yeah. as far as a cyber attack. And even just like, I know I talked about it like the last week, but you know, we had Microsoft had like a, some sort of widespread, like a big, uh, cyber attack that hit, you know, that they were able to defend off, fend off. Um, oh, right. The Azure, China. I think you brought it yeah. up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In Azure. Yep. So maybe like Microsoft potentially could relate it, Google or whoever, um, Palo Alto or something like that to say, Hey, this is what we identified. This is where it's coming from. Um, and this is our systems in place that we use to, to kind of defend that, uh, that attack. And maybe you guys can look into, you know, using that kind of system as well to prevent yourself from getting DDoS right. in the future. Um, so something like that, I think would be, would be, would be great if we had this, you know, this panel could maybe come together and collaborate on that kind of information. Right. Right. So, yeah, so it, interesting, like, uh, again, like the different administrations, like each one, uh, from the Obama administration, Trump administration, uh, they, they all had pieces. It seemed like they put the foundation. It feels like this administration is actually enacting, like they're flipping the switch on certain things. Like uh, I remember, I think it was like day one where they uh, cut on all the IPs that had been in reserve. We we're like, what is that for? <laughs> so it seems like a bunch of steps took place before now and we're starting to see the uh, it all come to fruition. So pretty cool, uh, I'm excited. Um, with that being said, uh, please stay to tune in. Uh, on Monday, we talked about the uh, the burner phones for the Olympians. Uh, Wednesday's uh, discussion will be centered around an entire security uh, team being fired from a private mm -hmm. business. So we'll talk about that. Um, Thursday, I, I sit down, I talked to Alex Borsham, a uh, 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 young man trying to get into cybersecurity. He's already uh, in, in IT, invests in IT very heavily, and he wants to take the uh, the uh, the plunge and go the cybersecurity route in the future. So we have a really good conversation. I think it's about 45 minutes. And then Friday, talk about everything else. So games, movies, TV shows, all that good stuff. So you just want to see how we unwind and our opinions about certain uh, films and things of that nature uh, that I suggest to Shannon that he hates. <laughs> and tune into mm -hmm. that episode as well. But hit up the website, www.theothersideofthefirewall.com to get to all of our social medias. Uh, you can hit me up personally. Um, I'm at Rai Rai Security Guy, R-Y-R-Y Security Guy on LinkedIn, Twitter, Clubhouse, and TikTok. And you, LeVon? Yes, sir. You can hit me up at the, uh, hit me up on Twitter's at LeVon Maynard. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure. Take care.